This is Seven National News and in our top story, the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, exchanged greetings on the holy occasion of Ramadan on Saturday in the presence of His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai. Both parties met at Zabil Palace in Dubai and were joined by His Highness Sheikh Maktoum bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Deputy Ruler of Dubai. His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Ruler's representative in the Western region. His Highness Sheikh Haza bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Executive Council. And His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior as well as His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Presidential Affairs, along with a number of other senior sheikhs. The ruler of Dubai and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi also received tribal dignitaries, exchanging greetings on the occasion, as well as reassuring them on their living conditions and welfare. The ruler of Dubai stated that meeting with such people embodies family compassion and national and social solidarity and reflects our Arab and Islamic traditions and customs cherished by generations. He added that the leadership of the UA is engaged in building human resources and making them happy. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the UA Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, has endorsed the model design of the Enterprise Command and Control Center, which the RTA is set to construct at a cost of 335 million dirhams in order to cater to the needs of the Expo 2020. His Highness issued directives for the quick construction and timely delivery of the structure to provide all the integrated transport systems required for the Dubai Expo 2020. His Highness also directed to use the latest in smart technologies. His Excellency Mata Altai, the Director General and Chairman of the Board of Executive Directors of the RTA, stated that the centre will become a Dubai landmark, standing at five storeys tall. The facilities will comprise of an office space, an auditorium, a press centre and four utility buildings. The EC3 will also be qualified for the Green Building Certification Gold Rating. Altaya also revealed that the centre will act as a unified platform linking various control centres of the RTA's operational agencies, such as the Dubai Metro, Dubai Tram, public transport, taxis and traffic control systems and centres with an integrated central control unit. It will be the first of its kind in the Middle East and promises to be a standout smart venue, supporting central decisions for various transit modes and assisting strategic planning roles. It will also prop up the RTA's efforts towards transforming Dubai into the smartest city worldwide in the field of transport. The centre will also ease traffic congestion, reduce transit time and cost, fend off traffic accidents and curb environmental pollution through adopting smart planning. Since the beginning of the year, the Ministry of Health and Prevention has issued 126 licenses for new medical and pharmaceutical facilities. According to news agency WAM, the new facilities included 22 multi-speciality medical centres and clinics. 58 pharmacies, 37 medical warehouses, six medical offices and two pharmaceutical plants. Dr. Amin Hussain Alamiri, the Assistant Undersecretary for Public Policy and the Licensing Sector for the UA's Ministry of Health and Prevention, who is also the Vice Chairman of the Medical Licensing Committee, stated that the increasing number of new medical facilities underscores the transparency brought about by the ministry and the streamlined procedures that it is applying to encourage the private sector to invest in the sector as a strategic partner. He also revealed that 16 violators, 11 health facilities and five pharmacies have been closed temporarily for a period ranging from one to six months for flouting health facility requirements and regulations. The closures, he noted, followed 1,097 inspections that were conducted in the first five months of the year. 
Dubai International Airport was closed for over an hour on Saturday due to an unauthorized drone that was flying in the airspace. According to reports, Dubai Airports announced that the airspace was closed from 11.39 a.m. to 12.45 p.m. due to unauthorized drone activity. While flight trader 24.com showed that 14 flights were diverted to Al Maktoum Airport over in Jebel Ali, four to Sharjah and three to Al Ain. The news comes as a drone caused a 55-minute shutdown of the airport in April this year, estimated to have cost the Emirates economy 3.7 million dirhams per minute. That's according to reports. Off the back of the incident, the Dubai International Airport is one of four drone no-fly zones set up by the General Civil Aviation Authority. The others are Al Maktoum Airport, Al Minhad Air Base and the Palm Jumeirah around Skydive Dubai. The GCAA chief, Saif Al Sawadi, announced on Saturday that they are working with the Dubai police, the airport and the relevant authorities in the investigations, adding that what happened was a breach of the regulations and a nuisance that has disrupted air travel in Dubai. Emirates Airline confirmed the closure of the airport in a statement, adding that the incident res resulted in a diversion of 13 Emirates flights to other UAE airports. The Consumer Protection Department of the Ministry of Economy has announced that no fines have been issued to retailers or vendors for overpricing food items so far during the holy month of Ramadan. As a part of enforcing the guidelines and to ensure compliance with the ministry's regulations, Dr. Hashim al Noemi, the director of the Consumer Protection Department, conducted a tour of the Abu Dhabi Fruits and Vegetable Market, which is a part of a nationwide initiative. Dr. al Noemi interacted with shop vendors as well as media representatives, where he noted that markets have ensured an adequate supply of fruits and vegetables during the holy month. Commenting during his tour, Dr. al Noemi further stated that daily imports in Dubai alone have reached 18,000 tonnes in the holy month so far, while Abu Dhabi daily imports will reach 4,000 tonnes. During this year's Ramadan, the Ministry of Economy will conduct over 400 inspection visits to ensure compliance with consumer laws. Among the major initiatives include discounts on over 5,000 essential items with 260 million dirhams, which will be organised by individual supermarkets, which includes discounts of up to 70% on some items. The Ministry is also urging the public to register any complaints to the department's hotline. All the fruit and vegetables available, and also the price about this fruit and vegetable, it is very fair. Uh, when I saw uh, everything, mashallah, under the control also. Um, today, today, I, I, I hope uh, inside a few days more, it will be reduced more than between 20 to 30 percent, it will be reduced than what began in Ramadan. I am present by the Fruit and Vegetable Committee in Dubai and also in Abu Dhabi. Today, today, um, increased the, uh, the, the supplier to export more than uh, in Dubai before at 15,000 ton daily, now 18,000 ton daily in, in Dubai. And Abu Dhabi before 2,000 ton, today 4,000 ton. And alhamdulillah, all uh, available. And also I have good storage also in Dubai. It is more than 125,000 ton available in the storage in Dubai. And alhamdulillah, uh, the fruit and vegetable available and I don't worry, inshallah, in the six months, no trouble, inshallah. Dubai police patrols have confiscated 81 cars caught without number plates, that's according to a senior official. Major General Kamis al Mazina, the commander-in-chief of Dubai police, made the announcement, revealing that the plates were removed by their owners in order to prepare for illegal races in the Emirates. He added that some were even seized after a police chase as drivers tried to escape at 300 kilometers per hour. He was quoted in a local daily stating that they were seized in various parts of the Emirate, mainly on Awar and Ras Al Khor roads, while the other cars were caught in dangerous performances and reckless driving that endangered road users. 
He said that police patrols managed to catch some of the drivers with the help of the public, who reported their acts in their areas. He warned the community that those caught in unauthorized races or reckless driving will see their vehicles impounded and their owners will also be heavily fined. Impounded cars can only be released if owners pay 100,000 dirhams. And finally, looking to other news now, Solar Impulse 2, the record-breaking solar-powered plane, has touched down in New York, completing the latest leg of its quest to circumnavigate the world without fuel. Upon arrival at JFK Airport in New York, SI2's team of pilots were greeted by the Abu Dhabi-based Mazdar Director of Sustainability, Dr. Nawal al Hosseini. Commenting on the plane's arrival, Mazda officials stated that the zero fuel plane is a symbol of the pioneering spirit that drives Mazda every day and it will continue to push the boundaries to forge global partnerships to transform the world while also investing in the power of clean energy innovation. It was further mentioned that the UA is committed to becoming a world leader in renewable energy knowledge, development and implementation. And initiatives such as this push the boundaries of research and development and also take us closer towards a sustainable future. Solar Impulse began its epic journey from Abu Dhabi in March last year with stops in a number of countries including Oman, India, China and Japan. It completed the first half of its circumnavigation of the globe late last summer after breaking multiple records on a 7,212-kilometer trans-Pacific flight from Japan to Hawaii. Solar Impulse is expected to return to Abu Dhabi in July or August this year. I think it was incredible. It took, uh, it took three years, many attempts, uh, for Lady Liberty to let uh, to let me approach her, uh, and uh, I think she wanted to choose the best nights. And today was a gorgeous night with uh, incredible visibility, very calm. And I tell you, the uh, the encounter was extremely extremely special. So I enjoyed it. Well, we completed the flight across the the USA that Bertrand started. Uh, late, late uh, April. April, exactly on the 24th, 21st, 21st, 21st of April. Uh, 21st of April, starting from uh, from Hawaii, crossing uh, the uh, the ocean towards uh, uh, California, and we entered California, the Silicon Valley. Uh, San Francisco was, I think, also for us uh, uh, a very important link. Um, to develop, you know, with all the entrepreneurs, the the uh, the, 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 the innovators of this uh, of this world, uh, in this uh, in this part of the uh, of the country, we flew uh, to many places, uh, been extremely well uh, received.